Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Spirit of Liberty broadcast. Appreciate you joining me live today. And uh, make sure to communicate with me in the live chat if you have any questions or if there's any audio issues or anything. Let me know, and hopefully we can get those things fixed. And hopefully everything is coming through loud and clear. Everything looks good on my end. So hopefully this uh, program will be a blessing to you today. Again, if you're new to these, uh, typically Tuesday afternoons. We just try to focus on issues regarding men specifically, trying to give help to them and areas in their life where they uh, often struggle or just there's a lot of difficulty. And what I want to focus on today, and this one too is especially, I think, important for young men uh, that are maybe just graduating uh, high school and uh, are going, getting out of college, going into college, whatever. I'm a little quiet. I'll turn it up a little bit. Let me know if that's good. But um, it, it can apply to even if you're a little bit older, some very important things uh, when it comes to deciding or choosing a career. That is a very uh, important uh, important thing in life. It's, let me know if that's better now. Uh, that uh, Yeah, it is. It, it's tough. And when you are just getting out of high school and then all of a sudden, you know, you start getting responsibilities, freedom, everything's changing. And then all of a sudden, too, there's this expectation on you to decide a career. It can be very overwhelming for sure. Uh, does, if, if I need to go up even more, let me know. It's not hard to do. I just don't want to be blasted and making it all staticky. But um, so I want to talk about some things that I hopefully will help people uh, in make that decision. And. Uh, again, this can apply to even if you're already married, um, some of you might just be working a job, you know, to pay the bills, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, maybe, you know, too, you'd like to think more about a career, something that you would enjoy a little bit more, something that might be a little more fulfilling. And I think this is it's a very important decision. So uh, we're going to go right into it. And I'm going to try not to be real long today, but you all know how I typically I uh, like to ramble on and on, but we'll see what happens. So this decision of a career, it is, it's one of the most difficult decisions for a young men. And uh, it's definitely a hard decision. I think the most important decision, of course, is you know who you're going to marry. But this one is typically um, one that you make before that a lot of times, or you're at least expected to. And so it is, it's, it's really tough. And the reality is that... Um, it makes sense that this is going to be a tough decision for you. Okay, If you're a young guy uh, just out of high school or whatever or college age and you're struggling to figure this out, I don't think you really need to feel that bad. I think there's actually some good reasons for why this would be such a difficult uh, decision for you. Because first off, um, in today's culture, why would a young man know exactly what he's going to want to do when he gets out of high school? I mean, I mean, think about it. How much do you really know about, uh, you know, corporate America and the job market? I mean, how much do you know about finances and running, a, you know, uh, raising a family, all those things? You're not just going to automatically know all that stuff as soon as you get out of high school. And not a lot that's in school really prepares people for that. Um, typically, what you're prepared for today uh, is, you know, high school is just, you know, they just tell you go to college. You know, and then college today, I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about this later. It's not as profitable as people think. In fact, um, it, it, I do believe it's profitable in some situations, but that again, that depends on what career you go into. Most people, all they're doing is going for four more years of indoctrination and tons of debt. And that's not good. But we'll say more about that in a little bit. But, you know, most dads raising young men, and especially guys uh, without dads, you know, they they don't have the family farm to pass on to their son like they used to or a family business. Most people today are, they're just kind of working a job themselves. And they don't really have something to pass on to their son. And so uh, back in the day, it was way more common. To have that, which would make it a lot easier for the son to decide what he's going to do. But, you know, if the son today, if, if the dad today does have a family farm, if he does have something, a business that he's wanting to pass on to his son, understand, too, one of the reasons young guys are so confused is they've all seen 5,000 movies 
about the guy who uh, didn't want the family farm. He didn't want to go into his dad's business. He wanted to follow his dreams and be a ballerina or something like that. And, you know, and he had that battle with his family and ended up following his heart and, you know, became a ballerina or whatever. And you've seen that movie a thousand times. And it's like there's some shame in a young man's mind today of staying in the family business or working on the family farm. And the truth is, it's probably a good move financially. You know, if that dad's built some good, strong business, uh, you know, gone through those hard times, you know, you could potentially benefit greatly from that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you just don't squander what he built and destroy what he built, which happens a lot of times because, you know, the next generation a lot of times doesn't have any character. But um, I'm, I say all this to just say you've been indoctrinated a lot into thinking there's some kind of shame in going with the family business. But at the same time, too, in many cases, you don't have that option. You've got to decide what you're going to do yourself. And so when you have no experience in a certain field, you have no way of knowing what you're going to like doing. You don't know if you're going to like being a salesman. Some people might like that. Some people might hate it. Some, pe you know, some people, they might like doing a more physical job. They might, they might want to build something. They might want to be a mechanic and work with their hands and fix things, you know, they, uh, you know, and, and the ballerina thing, that was just something I came up with. I haven't seen that movie either, but, uh, brother Matt mentioned that in the chat, but, but either way, you know, everyone's different as far as what they'll like. Some people would, they hate the idea. They would hate being out, working in the sun, working with their hands, doing all that physical labor. They'd rather work with their brain, you know, where there's other people they would hate being cooped up in an office or working indoors. So, you know, most young men, you're not going to know for sure what you're going to like. You don't have experience in all those things. And a lot of what young men are seeing and what they think they want are things that they've seen on television that are unachievable things that will never happen for them. You know, you ask a lot of young guys, what do you want to do with your life today? You know, I want to be a baseball player or a basketball player. Well, you're probably not going to achieve that. Not many do. You know, I want to be, I want to be a YouTuber. I, I want to make YouTube videos and make money off of that. And, you know, that's probably uh, not going to work out for you either. You know, I, I want to be an artist, you know, and listen, you know, you can make a lot of money with that if you are truly exceptional. And I know in all the movies, the person is always truly exceptional. Most of us aren't truly exceptional people. So uh, a lot of times you got to be a little more realistic, but you know, a lot of young men too, they've just been lied to about the reality of, you know, whether or not college is beneficial or not. You know, they, uh, they've been told, go to college, go to college, go to college. They've heard people say that, you know, our parents always saying go to college, but you know, going to college, that can mean anything. You know, there are so many pointless degrees that people are getting in college. I mean, look how many college students are today. A lot of times, you know, go look at protests. These people are out protesting all the time. A lot of times they're college students that are some of the most worthless human beings that you've ever seen in your life that look like absolute freak shows that are dependent on the government and are also greatly in debt. And they're out protesting because they can't get a job. And they can't get a job because the things that they were teach learning in college was just indoctrination to turn them into socialist Democrats. And, you know, there's nothing profitable about that. But typically, you know, if you want the college that might actually help you make a lot of money, first off, you got to be an exceptional individual. You got to be really smart. And you're not going to get it from the free, you know, uh, community college or something like that. You know, you're going to have to go to one of these expensive schools and you're going to have to work really hard. And there's going to be competition that you're going to have to overcome. So, you know, you got to understand the reality of those things. And, you know, a lot of times these people telling you, yeah, don't worry about going to college. It's because they understand you're really not that exceptional. You know, they're just being honest with you. And, um, you know, some people just need to be more realistic, but you're probably not going to be the next Elon Musk or whatever. So, uh, you know, that deci the decisions that 18 year olds today are just kind of expected to make, they're just not truly ready for those in this culture where they've not been prepped for it. They're not really capable of it. And it is, it's a big, important thing. And I get why they're freaked out. If you are, if you're that young adult, you know, 18, 19, early twenties, 
and you're just under all this pressure to make these massive life, life decisions in the matter of a few years and to decide on a career while figuring out who you're going to marry, all that kind of stuff, I understand your frustration. It's, it's, these are not easy things, and people don't need to really act like they're easy things. They are, they are difficult. So, some things, though, that I believe will help you, though, when it comes to this, because you don't want to just sit around doing nothing. And that's what a lot of people are doing. I do think this is something that you need to actively pursue. You need to try to figure out. And I think the sooner you figure it out, the better. I think you'll be you'll be better off. The earlier you can start on these things, more important. So what I want to give you today are just some, I want to help you align your priorities. What it comes down to in getting this right and making good decisions is making sure that your priorities are right. If your priorities are messed up, uh, all you're going to do is make decisions that are going to get you in more turmoil and that are going to make you unhappy. And so um, while I'm going to tell you some things that should be your priority, understand, you know, if your mind isn't right in these things, you know, we can all figure out how to write out our priorities on a list in a way that will satisfy someone like me. But are those really your priorities? Because if they're not, you're going to actually, you're still going to be in turmoil. And you're, it's very important that you get your mind and your heart right in these areas. And so the first, the first priority, obvious, this is super obvious, and forgive me for just stating the obvious. We all know this, but again, how to put it into practice is sometimes difficult. But the first priority, of course, is God's will. Okay, Now, uh, a lot of times we obsess over the unknown of God's will, and I think that's foolish. I think young people, I think everyone should always be laser focused on what they know is God's will. That's very important. And Matthew six thirty three says, "But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." And what are all these things? Well, those things that the Gentiles seek after, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to put on, all the things that everybody's worried about today, all the things that people are like, I got to go to college and I got to get this good job so I can make sure I have all these things that everyone is looking for. But verse 34 says, take no thought there or take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And I don't believe this passage here is giving us an excuse to just not plan anything or be irresponsible, which is what a lot of people do. This is just showing your first priority, your primary goal should always be the things of God. It should always be the will of God. And when a person is always focused on the will of God, when that is your daily goal, just doing God's will, serving him in every area where you know you're supposed to be serving him, the things that you're worried about right now those will take care of themselves. And so, obviously, every young man is going to be thinking about who they should marry, what their career should be, you know, whether or not they should go to college, all these things. You're going to be thinking about, you know, those, those are legitimate things, but often we focus solely on those things, not thinking about God's will for our life today, where people who just stay focused on God's will, the kingdom of God, pleasing God, serving God, they are doing all the things we're going to talk about that we know are God's will. For some reason, those other things all just seem to fall in place. And it's because of the fact that what you eat, what you drink, what you put on, you know, what your career is, how you're going to provide for your family, it is God's will for you to do all those things. It is God's will for you to have a job and to provide for your family. That for sure is God's will. And so the truth is when God sees you focused on the kingdom of God first, God is not going to let those things, you know, be neglected. That, that's not going to happen. God's going to make sure those things are all in place in your life. But unfortunately, we often are tempted to worry too much about those other things that really we should be leaving to God. And if, and if, we would focus on doing, all right, I'm going to do today what I know is God's will, not really worrying about those things, you know, and not because I'm just being careless about it. No, I'm letting God take care of them. That's where you're going to be better off. So 
in reality, what I believe this passage is teaching is that a person's mind and heart needs to be on the things of God. And when they are, all other things take care of themselves. Because, again, God wants you to take care of your family. If you don't, you deny the faith and you're worse than an infidel. You know, God's going to be embarrassed by you if you're not taking care of your family, if you're not providing for your family. So God's will is never going to lead you in a way that's going to cause you to not do those things. And a lot of times you'll have guys that are worthless losers not taking care of their family, not providing for their family, and they act like, you know, they're, you know, just following God's will instead, and they're not worried about the other things. But listen, if you are failing to provide for your family, it's because you are not in God's will. And you're never going to convince me otherwise. And so, um, you know, specifically, though, what it, what things, what are the things that are God's will? And this is what you got to do, and you got to start this at a young age. And so when it comes to deciding on a career, deciding on a job, whatever, never take a job that will not allow you to be faithful to church. Now, we know it's God's will for you to go to church. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God is not going to use you and bless you as a Christian if you are forsaking the assembly. If you are not actively involved, not even just attending church, but being involved in the church and, uh, and advancing the kingdom of God, winning souls, doing all these things that Christians are supposed to do, you know, if, if your job requires you to be removed from all those things, then just understand you shouldn't take that job. Okay. Now, I'm not telling you, too, that, you know, there aren't some jobs and there aren't some careers that a Christian can do that might take you know, make them miss a service every now and then. You know, there are some things that are seven-day-a-week jobs. You know, I'm glad hospitals don't shut down on Sundays. I'm glad the ambulance is still out there. I'm glad police officers are still out there. There's a lot of things that, you know, we need running seven days a week. Okay, I, I, I get that. But again... While I'm not telling you you can never, ever miss a church service for any reason whatsoever and any job that would make that happen, you know, is is not God's will. But I am saying, you know, you do need to keep the folk, you know, maybe you do, maybe you do want to be a cop really, really bad. I'm not telling you you can't be, but you should always, again, if it's going to completely remove you from church, if it's going to completely make it so you're just not capable to do the things of God, I think you need to find something else. I think you need to... Uh, let that be the priority in your life. And there are, there's going to be some things you might like to do, but you know, it's going to take you out of the house of God. I don't think if you, know, it's God's will for you to be a professional football player. When all that's going to do is going to just tempt you to compromise like crazy. You're going to have to miss church all the time. I just, I don't believe that's God's will. You say, oh, I, I, that's really legalistic or extreme. I don't know. I just, I'm not seeing any of these people you know, putting God first in their lives. Even these so-called Christian athletes, they're kind of all kind of jokes and embarrassments and poorly represent Christians. So um, I think you ought to prioritize jobs and I think you ought to prioritize shifts that you will allow you to be involved in church activities too. Those things are very important. And again, it's all about priorities. It, there, there's always an excuse. There's always a different shift you could take, but that you know will interfere more or less and but you got to make sure church it needs to be a priority and and an area where christian young men sometimes they'll go wrong so just kind of a warning on the flip side of that is they're often so involved in their church that they're content with really bad jobs that you would never be able to support a family with so and i guess that's fine if you don't want a family but, you know, most people do. Okay? And you got to understand, some churches have a lot of programs. I mean, not only do they expect to be at church every time the doors are open. I mean, they've got programs going on throughout the week, on weekends, you know, trips all the time. And a lot of those things are exciting. A lot of those things are fun. Nothing wrong with those things. But, you know, when you have a family, when you have a job, you, you know, you might not be able to go on multiple missions trips. In a year, you might not be able to show up at every single soul winning marathon that takes place and go to every conference that's being held 
around the country. You know, you've got responsibilities and you have to pick and choose. And I, you know, and I was the same way when I was, when I was young, I mean, I wanted not only did I, did I want to be in every single thing our church had, but I also, I like, I like going to conferences. I went to every conference I could. I mean, I pretty much would get the sword of the Lord and the revival fires just to see what conferences were going on. And if there was any within driving distance, I like going to them. I, I enjoyed that. And I remember after I graduated high school and I had a, I was working a full-time job and I remember having to miss some things and man, it, it hurt. You know, those things were fun. It was exciting. I've told this story in church many times about how I, uh, I had a job working in the guard shack at the Menards, uh, there in Peru, Illinois. And, uh, the, the guard shack where I sat, it was right by a ramp going onto the interstate. And I remember one of the first big events that I enjoyed going to every year, you know, when I was a student in school, I now am out of school. I'm not really able to do that anymore. And I remember watching uh, the church van drive by with everyone in it and them honking at me and waving. They knew I was in there and thinking, I don't get to go to this event. I have to work a job. And it kind of stunk. But, you know, it was part of growing up. And that's what I, I needed to grow up. I needed to start making money. I, and I couldn't just be at every event and every activity. And, um, and a lot of young guys, they're wasting a lot of time working really sorry jobs that they'll never be able to support a family with so they can do all that, you know, stuff that's good and profitable. But let's face it, too, a lot of it's fun. And so you, you got to get your priorities right. And I like having fun as much as anybody. But, you know, I also wanted to have a family. I want to be responsible. I want to be able to, to provide. And, you know, to provide for a family, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. And so, you know, after you, you know, I think high school, you know, during those years, you know, I think it's good to get a job, make some extra money. But after you become an adult, it's time for you to start trying to work on making enough money that you can support a family with. Okay, And I'm not telling you. And, you know, it, it, you know, because if if you're still living at home, I think it's good to live at home as long as you can. Um, you know, there's no sense in just immediately moving out. You might not be ready yet, might not be mature enough. Uh, mathematically, it's better to stay home and save money. You know, to prepare yourself. You know, save up to buy a house, or whatever. I think that is better if you can do that. But what a lot of young men are doing today, they're graduating from high school, and then they're living at home which enables them to work a crummy job with few hours. As soon as you get out of high school, you need to start thinking about actually making real money. And so you might, you know, might be time to move on from McDonald's. You know, I worked at McDonald's, but as soon as I graduated high school, um, I, I wasn't able to right away because I wasn't 18 yet. And most of the real jobs, you had to be 18 but let me tell you, as soon as I was 18, in fact, I actually got a job before I was, it was, it was a couple months before I turned 18, but they didn't realize, they did, they overlooked it when I filled out my application that I wasn't 18 yet. And so I was already hired, I was already working there, and uh, they just kind of ignored the fact that I wasn't 18 yet and uh, continued letting me work there and just hoped that it uh, didn't come up by anyone higher up, and it never did. But that, you know, you know, that's how anxious I was to get out of that job. I wanted to start making better money, and that job wasn't that great either. But uh, that's another story for another day. But, again, if you're out of high school, start thinking about jobs that make real money. And don't use the fact that, you know, you go to a church that's got activities seven days a week, and you're just trying to be faithful to those things, you know, you know, you like doing those things because you want to have fun. And part of being an adult means sometimes you don't get to have as much fun as you like to have. You got to be responsible. Go get a real job. You, sh you shouldn't still be working part-time. That's not reality. Okay? When, when, you get a wife, when you have a wife and kids, you're going to have to work, and you're going to have to work a lot. You're gonna, you're gonna, that verse in the Bible, six days shalt thou labor and do all that work, is going to become a reality to you. And so... Um, that it, the, and this is a mistake too. Guys who stay single for a while, 
they do. They start living in a fantasy land where they think they can, you know, they get used to living, working a crummy job, not making that much money, and yet doing okay financially, having a lot of fun because they're living at home, because they don't have, you know, other mouths to feed. But if that's your goal, though, to have a wife and kids, you need to start handling your money that way now with with the job you have. And so if you're uh, making a small amount of money, you know, that can't support a family, you need to start right now. Don't wait until you get the wife to uh, fi- you know find that job. Do it right now. So uh, that's a very important thing. So another thing too, your priority, it needs to be something that will uh, allow you to provide for your family. That's very important. Okay. And you need to be able to provide for your family, both materially and spiritually. And you can go to extremes on both. You can be working so much. You're never around your family. You're not able to be a spiritual leader. You're not able to go to church with them, but you know, you need to, but at the same time too, again, God's will is not going to lead you into something to where you can't take care of your family. And a lot of times what, what men end up doing is they end up pursuing a career that, it, it, you can't support a family on it. Listen, guys, it's not just about having a job. You're not going to be able to support a family on a McDonald's salary. It's just, it's not going to happen. So, uh, you, you might like working at McDonald's. I don't know. I hated working there, but I, I'm, you know, I, I've worked some very difficult jobs physically. And, but even if I had to do minimum wage at that job, I'd rather do the Walmart distribution center I work at. I had to work so hard there. But you know what? I would still rather do that than McDonald's, even if they were paying the same thing. I hated that job that much. But some people, you know, it's like they act like they like these jobs. But you can't support a family on it. You got this guy, he wants to have the, you know, a wife and a whole bunch of kids, but you've got to provide for them. And you're not going to be able to do it with that. So you need to look for something that will provide for your family. You know, you might want to be an artist. But you're probably not going to be able to sell enough to, you know, provide for your family. You might want to be a YouTuber, but you just might not be cool enough to have a channel that generates enough revenue that you're going to be able to provide for a family. So it's not just about what you like doing, even though that's important. We'll say more about that. But it's about something that will actually pay the bills, something that will actually take care of a family because you you've got to do that. So. Obviously, the things of God first, but then after that, you know, something that will is capable of providing for a family, if that's what you want. If you do, if you just want to be single and you want to go, uh, you know, live in some little apartment somewhere, I've seen all these, like, I see these things on the internet all the time, these tiny little homes that people are living in, these, like, I forgot what they're called, like pod houses or something, I can't think of what they're called. Super tiny. And, you know, if you want to, or, or people too, living out of their van. Um, listen, if you're single, I think you're, you, one great thing about being single is you're free to kind of do whatever you want. And maybe you'd rather live out of a van and see the world. If you're single and that's what you want, that's a desire of your heart, go for it. But if you have a desire to have a wife and children, I do not recommend that lifestyle. And I, I think you need to, I think you need to aim higher. Tiny homes is what they're called. Yeah. I, if that's what you want for yourself, but my wife wouldn't want, I I don't want to live in one of those. I know my wife wouldn't want to live in those. And I know it really wouldn't work out real well with our eight kids. So while that might be a cheap way to live and you can, uh, you can do that on your McDonald's salary. I don't know. I just, I can't. So I'm going to do something that's actually going to provide. And so another thing, when it comes to provision, this is another area where you have to decide your priorities. And again, all this stuff too, you've got to actually have this right in your mind. You can't just know, you know, memorize these steps I'm giving you. You've got to get your mind and your heart right in these areas. And it, cause if it's not, none of this is going to make you happy. So, um, cause it's so it's stuff. Okay. We guys, we like our stuff, right? And you know, it's okay for you to have stuff, but don't, you know what they say, don't let the stuff have you. And, Cause here's what you've got to understand too. 
when uh, you become an adult, you are going to find out that there is an unlimited number of things that you can spend your money on. I mean, there is a vast amount of things that you can get yourself in trouble with financially. I mean, folks, I mean, I could, I could get a $10,000 a year raise tomorrow, which would be a significant raise. And did you know if I could go to Bass Pro Shop and wipe that out so fast? I mean, and, and I could still walk out of Bass Pro Shop unsatisfied. That, I mean, there is so much stuff you can spend your money on. And whatever it is you like doing, you know, there's cheap ways to do it and there's expensive ways to do it. There's always going to be something to spend your money on. Cars. Obviously, we need transportation. We need transportation. Um, you can buy cheap cars, but you can buy really expensive cars too. So you got to figure out your, your priorities. And uh, I've had people call me before too talking about moving out here to the church. And I had one guy who wanted to come out and visit, but he, did, he lives in the city. He doesn't have a driver's license. Now, that's weird to us rural country people, somebody not having a driver's license. But in the city, a lot of people don't have cars. And I told him, I said, man, if you move out here, you have to have a car. I said, nobody's going to drive you around all the time. I said, we don't have public transportation, you know, buses and things, just drive around picking people up like that. It's like, if you're going to survive out here, you got to get a driver's license. You're going to have to be able to buy a car. And uh, he wanted to come out and visit. And he was basically wanting me to drive to the airport two hours away to pick him up and drive him around everything while I was here. And I just told him, I said, why don't you wait and come visit after you get a driver's license and a car? Because I said, um, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do that for you. But um, again, you, you know, it, if you want to live in a city, that's fine. You know, you can, you can live like that, but out here you can't do that. And, you know, everybody's got to figure out what their priorities are. Do you want nice cars or houses? Okay. You can buy cheap houses or you can buy a mansion and you can have a out here, you know, you could probably, find, you know, you could cheap rent out here. You could probably find something for six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month, but you could also, you know, spend thousands a month, you know, depending on what kind of house you get. And the thing is, nobody's ever completely satisfied with stuff, houses, materials, all those things. So you've got to figure out what your priorities are when it comes to financial things. You know, the Bible says having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. And the truth is, if your, if your priority is the will of God, serving God, being faithful to church, winning souls, providing for a family, you know, that's not, does, or that doesn't have to be a super expensive lifestyle. It, it really doesn't. And you can do it, you can do it pretty cheap. In fact, if I showed people some of my tax statements okay, um, over the last several years, I've been, it's been almost 11 years since we started this church. If I showed everyone how much I made in the, over the 11 years I've been here, a lot of you probably laugh at me. I mean, I, I made very little. I le we learned uh, over the years, you know, how to survive on very little. And uh, I feel like we've accomplished a lot uh, financially considering the amount of money that has, you know, come through our home. And, uh, but, but at the same time, we've been happy during that time because our priority was serving the Lord. We wanted to start a church, you know, we're, we're doing what we wanted to do. Now, if my priority was, you know, big houses, fancy things, man, I would probably be crying right now, but, uh, those things aren't my priority. You know, nice cars are not my priority, even though I have a pretty nice car right now, you know, that the Lord's provided. I've got, um, to me, it's just about transportation being as cheap as possible. I just want a vehicle that won't make me look like a redneck and that will get me from point A to point B, hopefully as cheap as possible too, especially with gas prices the way they are. That That's, that's all I'm really interested in. And you know, you can do that. But some people, your priority might be cars. You might have super expensive taste. And if that's how you are, you know, you're going to have to make a lot more money. And, but I'm, I'm just here to tell you stuff doesn't bring real pleasure. The things that are actually satisfying 
are the things of God, you know, are things involving families and that. But if that's just not in your heart, you know, if if things are in your heart, if earthly treasures are in your heart, then, you know, you can do everything I'm doing. You're still going to be miserable. You got to get your heart right in these areas. And that's where most people go wrong in all this and why they can't find happiness. A lot of times they're doing what they're being told to do and seek first the kingdom of God, but their heart's not in it. You know, they're doing what they're supposed to do and, you know, provide for your family, you know, take care of responsibilities. But their heart is towards all these things of the earth and the treasures of this world. And, and they're not happy. You've got to make sure that you don't just have a head knowledge of what you're supposed to be doing, but it's in your heart as well. And if you get your heart right, you know, you're going to find out, you know, delight yourself in the Lord. and He will give you the desires of your heart. So um, it's all about you need to find pleasure in doing God's will. And so, you know, even though I'm not a man of means and of great possessions, um, what I have has made me very happy. And I believe it's because, you know, I've gotten my pleasure from doing God's will. You know, I mean, we've devoted, you know, our, my family, we've devoted our life towards, you know, this church and serving God in this church and in being a pastor and trying to get people saved and the things that we have while, you know, a lot of people have a lot more. I think the things we have have satisfied us and brought us a lot more joy than other people. There's a lot of rich people that aren't as happy as I am. People in nicer houses with nicer cars. And, and again, it's the difference is priorities. You know, my priorities are in, are in a different place. And so uh, when it comes to a career, I think probably really the last thing that I would look at on my list of priorities, but I would definitely look at this, is finding something that you enjoy doing. And you hear that all the time, you know, find a job that you enjoy doing and you'll never work a day in your life. And, you know, there's some truth to that. And I will say that I, I'm doing what I enjoy doing now. Okay? Now, it took a long time before I got to where doing what I enjoy doing was my full-time job. You know, I, I had to, I had to work very hard to get to this point. You know, I had to work full-time while, while, you know, pastoring was what I wanted to do, but I also had to provide for my family. That was uh, my priority because even though God's will for my life was to be a pastor, it was also God's will for my life for sure to provide for my family. So that was always, you know, that was always the priority. And so I worked a job that enabled me to provide for my family until the church was able to pay me to where I could provide for my family. And it took me eight and a half years, I think it was, uh, to get there. Yeah, it, it, it took, it took a long time. Some people do it faster. Uh, but it, it, you know, that, that's just how long it took. But now I'm finally doing what I enjoy doing. And, um, you know, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm glad I don't have to do these other things, but you know, I was still happy doing those other things too, because at the end of the day, I was in the will, will of God I was still serving the Lord. I was still preaching. I was still serving in the church. You know, there were, uh, I wanted to do more of that, but wasn't able to for financial reasons. But, but either way, I was still happy doing those things because, you know, my main priority was God's will, providing for the family, all those things. And so this idea of doing something you enjoy, it sounds good, but common sense must prevail. Again, you know, if you enjoy working at McDonald's, but it doesn't take care of your needs, then you might want to look for something you enjoy less. And the truth is, too, I would enjoy, I would enjoy digging ditches if it paid good enough, if it enabled me to do the things that I needed to do to be able to provide for my family and do God's will. You know, so I tell people all the time, I, you know, I would dig ditches if it paid $100 an hour, you know, but, um, you know, I'm, 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 I wouldn't do it for uh, minimum wage. You know, I'd rather, there's other jobs that I could do, you know, that I would probably enjoy more. So again, 
I do think something you enjoy is important, but I, I don't think that, um, I don't think it's the most important thing. I think if you've got the choice between two, you know, do the thing that you enjoy, do the thing that has the potential, uh, you know, has a potential to of advancement. You know, I want to do a job where I can make as much money as possible in a shorter time as possible. So I can do the things that I enjoy doing. You know, those are my, those are the priorities. And so I enjoy jobs that allow me to do things that are a priority with me. So I enjoy jobs that allow me to go to church and be faithful to church and involved in church. Uh, you know, when I when, when I first got married, it was my goal to go full time in ministry, uh, but that was not something that was available at that time. Uh, but I, I also but in order for me to pursue that goal, I needed to be very involved in my church. And I had a job at a Walmart distribution center where I worked Tuesday through Friday, six to four in the morning. And that, I, that was fantastic. I was never forced to do overtime on uh, Sundays or anything like that. And that job enabled me where I was off every Saturday. I was off every Sunday. I was off every evening. So if we had a revival meeting, I was there every night. I never, ha I never one time, and you know, and I'm not trying to talk about myself, but I've never had to miss a church service because of a job. I I've never had to. And, you know, 21 years I've been married and more than that working, you know, I've been able to provide for my family, do all the things I've done and I've never needed, you know, now it's easy because that is my job, but, but it hasn't always been the case. I've, but I, cause that was my priority. So I got, I always got jobs where I knew that wouldn't be a problem. And, um, so, cause again, the things of God, that is what I live for. That is what I enjoy. And so because that, you know, that job enabled me to provide for a family and yet continue doing the things I love, I love that job. And I had Mondays off. Monday was my, that was my day off. And that's when we would do, uh, you know, family things and, and the fun stuff. And it, it was great. And so, you know, look for jobs that do that. You know, I enjoy jobs that enable me to provide for my family but especially one that enables me to provide for my family and have time for my family. That because that also is what I enjoy doing. And so again, you know, you might have a job that will enable you to provide for your family, but will you be able to spend time with your family? And you might enjoy that work a little bit more, but do you enjoy that work more than you enjoy your family? I enjoy my family more. So again, I'll do the I'll do the work that I like a little bit less. You know, if it enables me to do the things that are a priority, the things of God, being there for my family, those are those are the more important things. So it's all about just understanding what you want. And young men, you know, fresh out of high school, often they don't really know what they want yet. Okay, and here's and here's why you don't know what you want. Again, you you're just starting out. You're just seeing life for what it is. And so what you need to do to help you in this area, if you are a young man with little life experience, you're trying to figure out what to do, you need to look to people further down the road of life than you who have things that you want. Those are the people that you need to look to. And and you need to look at all different levels too. Again, you know, you, you need to look at people who are a few years ahead of you decades ahead of you and you know look at those people who have had a successful marriage you know what did what did they do how did they do things what kind of job did they work you know that guy who you know there's some people you're going to look at they've done very well financially but their family fell apart you know take a note of you know mental note of what that guy did it's like yeah and find out what kind of work he was into yeah he had a good job but he was also never home and he lost his family. But you know, there's other guys that have done well financially and they've raised great families too. Pay very close attention to what that guy did. All right, what kind of work did he do? Yeah, he was able to provide for his family and be there for him and raise a good family too. You know, you need, you need to look at stuff like that. Those are, are really important. And typically if you do, if you find that guy who is a good Christian, raised a good family, and is doing well financially, 
you you've probably found a guy who was balanced, a guy who had his priorities right, and you need to you need to follow that guy. You need to you need to uh, pay attention because too many people their priorities are just dead wrong, and that's why everything falls apart. And and so you know it's it's okay for young men to pattern their lives after other people and follow other people's examples as long as it's the right kind of people, you know, pe- and people who are still godly later in their life, who've raised good families and have been successful financially. And those people are out there, they're in every church, and you you need to look to them uh, to help you figure out what you need and what you want. And, uh, and if you do that, you know, you get your priority, you know, you keep your priorities right, God will help you get there. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And don't just memorize these principles I gave you. Make them a part of your heart. You've got to do that. And so, some of you, you've heard this, but you still, you still think a little bit more about cars than you do the things of God. Well, you know what? Stop going to car shows and start going to preaching conferences and stuff. You know, stop watching all those things on TV and start, you know, reading your Bible. Start, you know, getting around people who have the right kind of goals and desires. And if you do, it's going to rub off on you. There's, there's, there's no doubt about it. And, um, and you need to, you know, get your mind and your heart right in these areas because the things of God is where true happiness is. And a career, to me, it's nothing more than a tool, something that I can use. At any job I've ever had, it was just that. It was just a tool that I used, something that helped me fulfill my obligations as a husband, as a father, something that, uh, you know, so I could provide for my family, and something that allowed me to continue serving the Lord, too. And... Um, you know, I've, I've always wanted to give to the work of the Lord too. And if you have a good job, you make a lot of money, you know, that's more that you can give to the work of the Lord. And if, again, if that's where your heart is, you are, you're going to find great satisfaction in doing that. But if you're, uh, too many people are getting, we're getting fooled by all the commercials and things. And there is so much stuff out there, folks. There are so many things you will never be satisfied with the stuff that's out there. You'll never have enough money. And you just need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and look and be thinking about careers, young men, but do it with all these things in mind that we've been talking about and keep your priorities right. And I know God will truly bless you for it. So thank you all for watching. I hope this was a blessing. Uh, One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning too, uh, I'm on Odyssey now. And if you go to Odyssey, it's O-D-Y-S-E-E. It's another video platform that um, I'm trying to, I'm trying out because y'all know how YouTube's getting and um, they don't really deserve um, our use. But that's kind of the thing that's out there that help gets the message out the fastest right now. So I'm going to use it as long as I can, but I've been trying to, Looking at some of these other platforms and just kind of prepare there. And this one works really good. I, I'm, I'm really liking it so far. I like the app. And so I would encourage people to maybe try it out. I'll probably get a strike on YouTube for uh, promoting a different platform. But we'll try it out anyway. But go to Odyssey at Give Me Liberty Baptist. And uh, every, everything's getting mirrored there. It's kind of automatic. But if you'd like to use that and stop supporting... Uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm all for that. And who knows, maybe eventually this will be the next big thing and hopefully they won't be as weird on the censorship and stuff. I think when it comes to the you-know-whos, they're always going to be protected on all the platforms. Um, But I don't know. It's, It's worth a try. So anyway, thank you again for watching. I appreciate everyone joining us live and